I see we've got a healthy chat going on tonight. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What uh, what are you guys vaping? We ain't got started yet. We got a few minutes. What uh, what are you guys vaping tonight? We got a little bit of a delay though, so it'll take a minute to catch up and let us know. Raining, I'm like a busy chair. Oh my god, dude! When we were sitting under your carp, you know, that that your patio earlier. The rain was so loud on that tin roof, I oh, literally could down, not dude. think. It was, it was coming unbelievable. Down. And when Lisa showed that that radar, oh my god, it was unbelievable. What we got going on in chat here? Hey, Debbie. Steve's got a healthy chubby. Of course he does. It's always good to have a healthy chubby. Adam worked mine out earlier. Hey, Chris. Stephen's vaping Mississippi. Let's see. We got I'm Debbie wonderful. up here talking about. Oh my God! Never had chat talk that much. Let's see. I don't. No, I don't think it was just just wet thunderstorms. I mean, this is some pretty serious weather just come through. What's going on, Chris? Good to have you tonight, Charles. Good to have you. Good to have you, David. Debbie, who are we missing David here? Is, oh, Star Shadow. Yep. It's Mr. Star Shadow. The Gunk Plumaster. Guys, you've got the public link, so uh, we still got a little time. Yes, Charles, your poster, your chats, posting, poster, chatting, poster, posting in chats. What's up, Dina? We will, uh, we're going to have a special guest from Casada tonight, so that's pretty exciting. What's his name? Pretty Alex exciting. Clark? Alex Clark. Sweet. Debbie, um, Debbie hooked us up with him, yep, by yep. the way. And, uh, thing here. So we're going to learn about, you know, we just know a little bit about advocacy here and there, but, you know, I think this is the this is the guy who knows what's going on kind of all over the place. Yeah, he's kind of full-time into this, apparently. Now, who is Bigster91? Not sure. Bigster91, who are you so we can? Dina, to nice to have you. Here. I'm uh, I'm Double Barrel Canal today. Series boxes. We're going to talk about what we got on the end of these today. Yep, yep. Yep. Take a little step back a little bit and look at an older RDA. Yeah, just because I like. It. See, I'm still curious to who Bigster ninety one is. Oh, that's Spike. 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 Yeah, Spike. Uh, Sullivan. Yeah. No, I saw no Charles Sullivan up there. Okay, shit. Unless he I changed. I thought that's what David was saying. It was brother Spike. Oh well, fuck it. We'll figure it out in a minute. Jacob. Ah, uh, there we go. There sweet, we go. Sweet. There we go. Hey y'all, usual here, and effective. Tommy's being mean. Imagine that. Yeah. Tommy can't be mean. Tommy's too high. Christina, I haven't said hi to you yet. Hello, love. Donna, we got the whole Burns crew here tonight. How's Donna and Steve over here? Hey, go ahead, go ahead and pop that door open when we get started because we're going to have a couple people walk in still. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, we got uh, James Bellino here. The cool dad. The cool dad has showed up. I wonder if he's vaping on the Mississippi tonight. I don't know. Like I said, I'm double barrel canal today. I don't um, like that nomad, man. It's a very simple vanilla custard today. A simpleton kind of mood, as usual. Yeah. Just need to keep it that way, I guess. I uh, I found a juice that I have fallen in love with since uh, when we went over to Amaza earlier. But we'll talk about that as we get on down. You guys, uh, like I said, we got a little bit more time. We'll go another minute, another maybe three or four or five minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll kind of kick it all started here. If you guys notice, I'm not looking this way because I am watching chat. I figured it'd be better to have it here than constantly looking up there. Yep, yep. So uh, trying to monitor both here without looking so funny looking up here all the time. Canal. Let's see where's need an I just took you a 120 yesterday. You need another one tomorrow? Happy to bring it. 46 oh, Peaks. Yeah. I don't know that line. Never heard of it. Where yeah. did that come from, James? Uh, 46 Peaks. Yeah, I don't know that one. I what's what's the up, flavor profile? Hmm. Most of you have at least heard about it. You know, maybe yeah. I've tried them or know what they're about. At least I've yep. never heard of it. We think there is a chance that Scott will stop by later. Don't blame us. We're not our fault. Not. We're hoping not. It's definitely not our fault. Uh, let's see. What else we got going here? What is that? The, oh, it's that camera in the camera. Yeah, that's the down camera. Let me switch over to that angle. Right in the thing. That was the arm of the chair. Anyway. So, yeah. Well, go ahead and talk about what you got new, man. 
Well, before we do that, let's talk about what we're vaping, because I know I've already okay. gone through what I'm vaping. I'll talk about the devices a little earlier, but or a little later, but like I said, we're double barreling canal today. Pretty good. Any of you guys who hadn't tried it out, give it a go. But I got some new tanks in today. I actually got three in, uh, actually yesterday. I got them all built today, and we've got the new Vepresso Gemini that I told you about last week, and I got the Ceramic Coil Tug Tank. Um, series is boxed on them both. And uh, really good vapes. What do you got going on? Nothing too intriguing. It's kind of yeah. old. Um, had the Zenith Double Cross 2.5 on top of Nomad box. Yeah, I don't know and that. Just old, can't believe you. I just you know I, I think not, what I happened. Never, I think the Zenith about. Double Cross came out kind of when you had stepped back from reviewing stuff for a little while. Um, it's possible. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later because I'm gonna what I'm gonna do later in the show, guys, is step back and talk about some of the, the RDAs, especially authentic RDAs that are maybe a year, year and a half, two years old now yeah. that you can get for, well, I say two years old, it's back in the atomic days, but a year old or so that you can get for really reasonable prices now. They're still stellar RDAs. Yeah. And uh, the, so you can get really nice kind of even collectible in some instances, authentic yeah. mods or RDAs for almost a little bit of nothing. A and lot they, of people they, still got these in the boxes. They could have been, I mean, what were they when they came out? Were they... Eighty hundred dollar ads uh, when they came yeah, out. Yeah, they were they were hundred dollar RDAs. And, and now they're yeah, I, now realistically, they're, they're, you can probably get a really nice Zenith uh, version two or two point five for I would assume fifty or sixty bucks. Um, I think the last version two that I got, I paid like sixty bucks for, it was literally still in the box. I don't think a guy had ever even used it. So yeah, um, it just you can really still get some nice RDAs out there. What's up, Sullivan? Well, I'm gonna talk about this one a little bit more later. Just kind of step back, but. We'll give it one more minute, then we're going to kind of kick off. Now, what devices are you guys going? I know we've talked about a few juices. What devices are you, you guys using tonight? Uh, let's see. Who else? We got anybody new come in yet? Oh, not a whole lot. Definitely want to give a special thanks to uh, to Debbie, who uh, who hooked us up tonight yeah, with, yeah. Uh, with Alex. Um, I think that's going to be really awesome. We're going to bring him in uh, probably... Oh, probably in about 10 or 15 minutes. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and drop him the live link in the event that he don't have it. Uh, yeah, we'll have to talk with him. Um, if y'all got any questions, like I say, this is uh, one of the guys from Casa. Um, if y'all got any questions just up front, y'all want us to kind of throw out there too. If you got any yeah. questions in general about advocacy, um, we'll be glad to shoot him at him uh, or shoot them at him, rather. Sorry. Um, yep. But if y'all got any questions or want to know anything, um, this is specifically a representative from Casa. So um i would say if you've got general questions i mean obviously he's not gonna know what's going on with safada or the vapor militia right. as much as he will with Kasa, but um i'll say oh, you know, questions baby. or anything throw them out there and, and i got a hell of a donation for these so i'm gonna make sure area, i pull them out here you uh, where'd you get those from this is uh these are gordon's and uh it was kind of we kind of got a little bit of a bidding war uh many many of you guys were up there at maze of vapors the other night um, and and Gordon he kind of got up literally on a pedestal. He he jumped yeah. up on top of a couch, and uh, kind of started the idea of us uh, getting into maybe talking about advocacy tonight. So he uh, he said the first hundred dollars gets my personal vaping militia dog tags, and there the Gordon Tinsley there they are. <laughs> and so it's kind of funny because Jim I was I was on the other side of the room, and as soon as he said it, I immediately reached in my pocket to grab a hundred bucks. And uh, I got to run up there, and I said, I got it, I got it. But Jim was literally standing right next to him. Yeah. And so Jim reached up and handed him the $100 first. And I'm like, ah, oh, damn, I want those dog tags. And so uh, I said, uh, I said, I'll said i double it if I, if I can get them. And so I ended up paying $200 or donating $200. Yeah. And we'll talk about where that $200 is going to go to uh, to get Gordon's personal vaping militia dog tags. You know, so, I never did ask how much about that took up that night. I imagine it was quite a bit. It was, uh, so it was just a shade under $500. Good, good. And uh, so for, for many of you guys who don't know, um, Brandon Weiss, uh, Melissa, his wife, and several others, and I'm, I'm going to try to get involved at as high level as they'll let me, um, is starting a new uh, a new advocacy group specifically for Mississippi and Mississippi legislation. So it is... Uh, as that gets organized, as that gets further down the line, I know next week they're going to be electing kind of the the board of the directors or the you know the the high level positions of the group. I don't know the acronym for the group, but uh, as that M M V S A A M V S A A, yeah. as that group gets kind of uh, 
you know, settled and, and up and going, the uh, in the neighborhood of five hundred dollars that was taken up in donations is going to go to that group to help get it started. So, pretty an amazing thing, Gordon jumping up and doing, yep. and I uh, was glad to be a part of it and glad to walk away with Gordon's tags there. Um, so I guess let's see, we're about seven minutes in. Um, last thing I'm going to ask you guys before we bring Alex in. Um, is there anything you guys again want want us to, to, to talk to Alex about? Is there anything that you want to uh, um, anything in advocacy that you want to know about? And after Alex, is there anything you guys <coughs> want us specifically to talk about? So uh, while we wait on the delay to go, I'm going to put my earbuds in, get Adam his, and we're okay. going to try to talk to Alex here. Um, try to get Alex in, and then uh, here's your thank you, sir. Let me get mine on here. We'll go ahead and try to get Alex. See, my, that's the wrong one. Uh, we'll get better at this. I'll try to get mine going. You get yours going. And I'm, I'm good here, man. And I'm gonna go ahead and call Alex. Do the one ear thing. Hey Alex, how you doing, man? Good. How's it going? Good. Let me uh, let me just make sure we're all in good shape here. Um, can you guys hear and see Alex? So we got a little bit of a delay. Alex, have you been watching any at all? Kind of moving up to this point. There I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, just a little bit. I, I, okay. I tuned in shortly after you sent me the link. Wonderful. We're so glad to have you tonight. I um, just want to make sure, Debbie, can you can can you guys hear? Okay, great. So we can hear him. Good deal, good deal. So Alex, uh, man, we're so glad to have you here tonight. I know you won't be able to see our video because our broadcast takes that up, but we can see you there. And um, kind of where, where we wanted to reach out to you is last week we had uh, we had TJ Birdwell. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, from Indiana. He was a shop owner from yes. Indiana. Owner of the Vapor Vice in Indianapolis. Yep. Vapor Vice right. in Indianapolis. And and we, we, we talked a lot about kind of where the where that law was and what it was gonna do in Indiana. But kind of what we're looking what we were interested in and when, when I kinda of chatted around and, and the idea with Debbie come was we kind of wonder where things are other places in the country where where are some other places that are some danger yeah, where, some hot spots right where are some uh where, what are some things that are happening so you know just kind of i don't know i'll kind of hand that to you and then we'll do a little back and forth um well i could probably ramble on for quite a while that, with that's perfect all the different states that are uh uh currently dealing with things um i just got back from california um, I was uh, able to um, uh, go this so the California Safada had a lobby day uh, in Sacramento and um, I was able to kind of tag along and be the consumer guy um, there was a press conference before I was there asking the governor to veto um, Senate uh, special session bills SBX 2-5 um, which it, if in case people don't know, um, basically it brings vapor products into the Stake Act, which I forget what Stake uh, stands for. But stop tobacco, um, stop teens from accessing things that kill them every day. I don't know. It's, <laughs> uh, it, it it means something, and uh, it, so it redefines to tobacco product to include vapor products and subjects the category to. A bunch of tobacco regulations right. um, which now, is I remember about a week ago uh, maybe a week and a half ago there was a a big viral thread going around um, about calling the governor's office and I, I personally called 93 times and, uh, <laughs> yeah um, I, I counted it you know, did you um, get did you get through all 93 times no I, I okay. got through a, I did get through a couple of times though yeah. I left I left several messages and sent several emails you know just trying to do the part and I tried to get quite a few people I've, I've got a few thousand followers on YouTube and tried to get the word going and man I just you know I just hope something can come about it not because I know that law in California that's dangerous trying to classify it as a tobacco product because would you agree with me that California when it comes to things like this I think California leads the nation so once California starts it over time the rest of them pick it up 
Um, yeah, it's, I mean, California's the most populous state. I think they have, like, 43 million people living in California. Um, and uh, one of the statistics I heard tossed around uh, the other day was uh, something like 60 to 65 percent of the vapor industry is in California. Mm -hmm. So uh, absolutely anything that get, gets passed at the state level there will affect, um, it, it will affect likely consumer access to the products and it will, will have an effect on the rest of the industry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, we, as we was talking last week, when it comes to to just the vape industry as a whole, when you look at the, if you look at juice vendors, if you look at, you know, hardware manufacturers, when you, I mean, even some of the largest co-packers in the country, some of the biggest name brands in the country, some of the biggest online vendors in the country, some of the largest vape shops in the country, some of the biggest events in the country, you know, it's just kind of terrifying to see what's going on in California. Um, and I know a lot of people kind of are familiar with California and Indiana, but where do you know us? Some oh, and and you know the new Alaska tax, which is out just outlandish. Mm -hmm. um, do you, as far as more local to the south, do you know of kind of any things that are going on in these areas? We're in Mississippi. Um, mm -hmm. We know a little bit about what's going on because we just actually had a bill knocked down that didn't get out of committee. Um, and what do you know? The, remember the name of the bill? It was House Bill 349, which would have taxed uh, any e juice at 68, 68 cents yeah. per milliliter at yeah. retail sales. So that's um, that's, pretty, that's a pretty huge. Yeah, and actually, I tried to you know I tried to call it. I tried to call the author of that bill today, the representative, and get him to call me back. Uh, maybe he'll call me back tomorrow. I'm not sure. I'll call again. But I, I really wanted to talk with him because, you know, he'll probably be around next yep. year and he may want to introduce the same bill. And I don't know that he understands that he's trying to place an $18 a bottle tax on things. Yep. So, yep. When you know, I just, I really wanted to talk to him and say, hey, do you realize what you're asking for here? You know, we sell juice Absolutely. from $17 to $22 in the shop. Do you realize you're wanting to place an $18 tax on that and make sure he understands really what he's what, that's what he's trying to do there and I, I think it may just be ignorance that they don't understand they're going to double the cost of something yeah and a lot of times you know they can dress these tax bills up as a, a, an effort to discourage use or improve public health or however they want to sell it to the public um, but uh, at the end of the day it really is kind of a money grab and I guess that's kind of, you know, one of the things that, that, that should be concerning with some of the southern states is, I mean, typically, um, you know, the southern states are amongst the poorest in the country. And, uh, you know, they're going to be looking for money wherever they can get it. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's, it's absolutely, it's the wrong place to look for it. Actually, I had just responded to somebody in Vermont um, who you know, Vermont's looking at a 92% wholesale tax wow. um, and uh, one of the interesting bits of data that we recently I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody had seen the Daily, Daily, the Daily Caller uh, article that came out I think late, maybe mid last week um, Montgomery County Maryland passed a 40% wholesale tax and uh, in the first six months now they had estimated that they were going to raise two million dollars a year off this tax, and in, in the first six months they've only raised one hundred seventy-five thousand. So they're way short of their projections. Well, I have you know a question about that. Do you think that it's possible because of that tax, it's pushed the consumer more online instead of going to the brick and mortar stores where they're paying those higher prices is that is that hurting small business and just boosting online business yeah i don't have any real numbers at the moment to kind of back that up but that is really that's one of the, the arguments that, that that we make is that um you know online sales are absolutely you know it's untaxed it's a place where people are going to go not only that but when you're talking about a county or a state that's surrounded by other municipalities and states that don't tax these products people are just going to go outside the, the boundaries and, and get their product there washington dc is a great example of that you know dc is not you know geographically a large place and a lot of people that work in dc don't live in the district so rather than you know on their lunch break or something go down to the local brick and mortar shop they'll just wait till they go home to maryland or virginia and buy their product there um, DC has the, uh, I believe it was a 70, 70, 75% 70, 
wholesale tax that is enacted last year. Um, so yeah, it, it's a combination of both moving to online sales, uh, shopping outside <coughs> the boundaries of the, the municipality or the state, and then of course you have brick and mortar shops that just because of those things they just they can't stay in business. Um, or they preemptively, you know, kind of cut their losses and get out. Um, we're seeing that in Chicago. Um, I, I don't know of the of any places that have shut down in Montgomery County. Ron Ward is actually uh, on our board of directors, and he has a shop in Baltimore. So he was going to, you know, check and see what he can find out about so uh, shops shutting down in Montgomery County. Well, I have a curiosity question, and then uh, there's another thing I was wanting to chat with you about. Mm -hmm. On the, the Chicago, the 55 cent per milliliter tax, did that tax actually go into effect? Did it, did it, is it currently a live tax that's, that's active in the state in, or in the city of Chicago? Um, the, and I was informed that it was actually retroactive to all juice that was in current inventory. Um, did, where, did that, where did that end up going? Do you, do you, are you aware of that? That's that's a real deal. Um, it's fifty five cents per milliliter, uh, and when you tack on, I think what I, I, I'll have to I'd have to research it, but um, sure. What uh, may have been waiting for approval was the Cook County tax, which would have added an additional twenty cents per milliliter. So, in Chicago, since Chicago is in Cook County, you're paying both the city tax and the county tax. Wow. So it will be 75 cents per milliliter. Um, I don't know about it being retroactive. A lot of times there's language uh, in these bills that, you know, as, as a business, you're paying the tax on what you have in, in your inventory, you know, when the, the tax goes into effect. Um, so it's not necessarily that they would go all the way back to January 1st and say, you've got to pay us this tax on everything that you have, you know, bought and sold throughout the year up until right. this point. Um, although it, I wouldn't put them past them to try yeah, that. Absolutely. Uh, New Jersey recently, like a few years ago, New Jersey did that with uh, commercial property taxes and, and made it retroactive. And actually where I used to work, the landlord at that, that building, um, I think they found themselves owing like $30,000 in back taxes because this crazy law so um yeah it's not it's not unheard of for people to do that but uh, it would be extra outrageous for them to do to do that that there yeah that uh, that is absolutely pretty out outstanding and outlandish um and i i want to tell you a story about the indiana thing and i i know casa has been involved in in trying to trying to knock down what happened in indiana but uh, we was we was chatting with T.J. Bordwell, the one of the owners of a shop in Indiana, who is actually trying to get because there's one security company. The way the law is written, um, that one security company has to have had you know a camera on on a juice, so basically like a warehouse with video monitoring. And that particular company is no longer actually accepting juice companies. Um, they said they basically they said that they had had since November of the previous year to comply. Um, but the funny thing is, is the law just pa had just passed basically two or three days before he recorded this conversation. So do you see, where do you see in the Indiana situation, um, you know, if there's one security company that's not taking juice vendors, um, only a couple of them that are already there through the, you know, buddy system, um, where do you see that it's even possible for, for other juice vendors, other juice manufacturers to in any way make any headroom in the state of Indiana? Um, yeah, Indiana's a bit of a mess. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to know a whole lot about sure. solving that problem. Yeah. Um, other than to say, uh, you know, there at some point should be a legislative solution to this. There are currently two lawsuits against the state of Indiana. One's federal and one is at the state level. Um, both of them have very s similar arguments. Wow. Some of them are a little bit different, um, but uh, there there is a, um, a, a, a legal solution in the right. works. Um, so, and there's a lot of hope that the federal lawsuit has uh, some uh, en enough merit to uh, potentially roll back 
some of that bad legislation. It's not. It's it's certainly not going to be ideal. Um, so here's kind of you know in talking with some people from Indiana, um, the gist that I got was kind of no matter what, the state was really interested in regulating the industry and bringing it into that kind of three-tiered regulation. So you have manufacturers, wholesalers, distributors, or it would, wholesaler and distributor to me sounds like the same thing, but yeah. at some point yeah. you have that, you know, you have a smaller number of people involved in making and distributing the product um, and it becomes a lot easier for the state to uh, monitor and regulate, um, just like what's done with with alcohol um, and 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 tobacco and and you know other industries work like that. It's it's right. not it's not it's not specific to vapor, um, but it does in a way uh, diminish uh, the wide variety of products that are available to people, um, and in some cases due to costs and so on. Uh, it, it could diminish consumer access generally. Um, so it, it's, I think, kind of some of the lessons taken from Indiana, and there was, you know, the Georgia bill is a good example right. of, of yep. Absolutely. Uh, you know, whether or not that same kind of casino company, I believe there was some confirmation on that, that the casino company was involved in that as well. Um, but even just, you know, kind of imagine Imagine a world in which they were not involved in that, and some legislator in Georgia looked at Indiana and said, "Hey, this is what we need to do to our state in order to get this more uh, manageable uh, framework for the vapor industry here." Right. And and that's kind of the thing that I, I think a lot of people are concerned about spreading to their state. Um, I think Arkansas sort of has very similar a very similar setup. Um, this is where you know you you can't vendors from outside the state are not allowed to sell direct to consumers in Arkansas. You have to go through a wholesaler, and the wholesaler then goes to a retailer. That's just that's kind of their their setup there, um, and that that's uh, you know it, it, it's it's possible to do that in a way that doesn't completely disrupt you know the industry. It's still it, it can it can be done in a way that people can still enter into the market. You can still get innovation. You can still get the diversity of the products, um, but the, the state would be able to to monitor compliance and monitor you know uh, the things that they need to keep keep track of. Um, but Indiana is not a good example of that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, but I, I I am I am hopeful that down the line, you know, this is. This is, I, I, I admittedly, I, I, I will cop to being naive about politics in any particular state, sure. um, but I, I don't, I don't think it's uh, fair, really, to rule out legislative solution to these problems. So, um, once you know, whatever the outcome is of the lawsuits, uh, and I, I, I hope for the best, uh, and and what. To be, you know, as supportive as, as I possibly can, which for me is a matter of, you know, it can be hugs and handshakes and a shoulder to cry on, or it can be, um, you know, I, I, that's pretty much it. Moral support at this point, um, but uh, you know, no matter what the outcome of the lawsuits, I, I, I do think that people should really be focusing on 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 amending the law going forward. Right. Well, you know, we, uh, yeah, you, I agree with you wholeheartedly that Indiana is an absolute catastrophe. <clears throat> um, so, some, some, a lot of people, and the reason that I wanted to do this is, at a when we was at Amaze of Vapors, we was having kind of a special event, a juice tasting the other night, and uh, one of the uh, one of one of the the larger juice vendors in our area, Gordon Tinsley from uh, from Earth's Bounty, he literally stood up on a uh, on the back of a sofa. And when he, and and started preaching, and uh, we started talking about advocacy, and started to uh, you know ask questions to people there, and, we, and there were you know hundred people there um, asking questions to people on whether they had heard anything about advocacy, whether they had ever heard of uh, organizations like Casa and several others, if they'd ever donated to organizations like Casa and, and and others, and I was amazed at the response that we got. Um, I mean, it was literally. 
10 people or no I'm not even 10 people probably probably six people you know and you know I I, that that just amazed and blew me away because I remember when Kasa was in its infancy this was probably four years ago um, on my YouTube channel I did a donation drive um, where I donated a thousand dollars to Kasa four years ago and uh, it just like I said it just blew my mind how nobody knew anything about advocacy in that room and uh you know we got a little preachy and and everybody started to really kind of um kind of start to get it because we're letting people know you know what's going on in these other states and how you know how easy it is to lose it how easy any they, they could come in and take it away so for it, Kasa, for it i know you could speak to Kasa. we're we're kind of as where is Kasa now in in the in the I, I guess kind of in the ability to make a difference or an impact in legislation you know is there does Kasa have a lobbyist now you know where where is Kasa making an impact now <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, we don't have a lobbyist. Uh, I, I'm 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 never going to rule that out. Uh, sure. Maybe down the line, it becomes an affordable option for us. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment, you know, we don't actively do any fundraising uh, unless it's for a specific project. Um, right. You know, we've we've done fundraising for for scientific projects. <coughs> Excuse me, and uh, and some other things. Um, but uh, we're we're getting that that's a, there's sort of official paperwork involved in being right. able to uh, fundraise throughout the various states. Um, so yeah, lobbyists are expensive, and um, although I could imagine a world down the line where we have a lobbyist in specific states and maybe at the federal level, uh, we're just not. I mean, that's you're talking potentially hundreds of thousands of oh, dollars absolutely. Absolutely. A, a month. Um, in order to have multiple lobbyists, so um, we're we're just not there, and, and it could take some time to get there. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, at the moment we have a little over one hundred and thirty-six thousand people that we count as members. Mm-hmm. Um, probably about seventy to eighty percent of them are signed up to receive regular emails from us. Um, and when you compare that to the estimated number of regular vapor users in the country, um, that's that's just scratching the surface. Absolutely. Um, and, and I don't think that this is unique to vaping. Most issues see very low participation, very low turnout. Um, out of the people that we do have, uh, out of the people that do receive emails from us, we're actually kind of above the curve. Um, most organizations will see something around five percent participation rates, um, or even open rates on email. Sure. Uh, our open rates are, you know, between eight to twelve percent. So, yeah. people that are interested in what we're doing and are signed up to get our our, our messages are are engaged and are are more likely than in other issues to take action on something. Um, and that's really, you know. We represent a voice that uh, industry, on in in many instances, is not allowed legally. They cannot represent. They can't say the things that we can say. Which is one of the things that I, I kind of think is funny. Whenever somebody comes up to you and says, "Oh, the vapor products aren't regulated," actually, you know, there is some sort of default regulation on pretty much all products uh, with. As the, as far as the FDA is concerned, which is that if you start making a health or medicinal claim on you know anything, if I you know if I'm gonna if I told you that this water here cured cancer uh, and marketed it that way, then the FDA would be knocking on my door and shutting down my business. So you know it's kind of funny that that we or that the industry gets criticized left and right for saying that these marketing these things as cessation smoking cessation products. Uh, when you know legally the existing regulation actually uh, pr- prohibits them from doing that um, but as a consumer we can say that till we're blue in the face right. uh, and I do I like to take that opportunity and say that publicly as often as I can um, and then there's you know the we are frequently courted by um, other companies, um, generally industry, in order to, uh, you know, engage our membership to send messages. And, um, 
you know, I think that the, the larger companies are starting to have, have, have come to realize the value of engaging consumers in this issue. Um, lawmakers tend to not pay a whole lot, like when it comes down to the private meetings with people, um, it, it, it seems that the lawmakers are more interested in hearing what business owners have to say. Business owners are signing paychecks, business owners are paying taxes, they're paying rent, um, you know, they, they are the ones kind of moving the money around. I'm actually, hold on, just a second, I was actually really shocked to hear you say that, I'll be honest with you, because yeah. I kind of, I, I guess it's kind of, I don't know, let me tell you what I had a thought in my mind, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, because I looked at Indiana where um, there was mainly shop owners mm -hmm. and people in the industry um, kind of went up to their state congress and talked and everything, and it, mm -hmm. it almost seemed to me that they, that they almost got a black eye for that because there weren't more consumers and regular people there that weren't making money off of it. Am I am I off base about that, or was that a was that a situation that's not typical? It it, it depends, um, honestly. I mean, it, but see, yeah, it, it, there is a value to it, and, and it, there, there needs to be a healthy balance. Um, but uh, I think more what I was saying is that you know it's been my experience, and I, I went to. I've been to a couple of hearings here in New Jersey, uh, and of course the the lobby day that I just went to in California. Um, you know the 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 arguments that lawmakers are interested in are the ones that can be measured in dollars, and a lot of the consumer arguments. A lot, of, you know, me, me as just a, a guy, um, you know, the the money that's attached to me is actually kind of hard to think about. So when we start talking about switching to a smoke-free product will save the state money down the line in healthcare costs, it'll save Medicaid uh, some expenses or, or you know whatever program is, is people are, are sort of dependent on for, for healthcare, healthcare dollars in your state. You know, the savings down the line that you know that's a very real number but it's kind of abstract when you yeah, think kind of about it quantify. right when you when you put it in terms of you know sales tax or uh you know payroll taxes uh or, or just you know rent um those numbers you can you can put that on a chart very easily and say oh that's millions of dollars and we can see that right now um but right. the the, you know, the healthcare costs and other savings um, that's sort of the, that's the very kind of unsexy way to look at, at money right. for, for a lawmaker. Um, so it's not that it's not that the consumer or the you know the citizen um, perspective or, or experience is, is not important. It's just that it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. So um, that's why the business I think the business owners have a, a little bit um, easier time in getting some face time with lawmakers. So if there's any shop owners that are that are watching this. Um, today, you know, take that as some encouragement to, to reach out to your lawmakers um, and, and you know set up some meetings. Join the chamber of commerce in your in your city. Um, chambers chambers of commerce come with kind of their own uh, ability to lobby policymakers. Um, you know, if you're a member of the chamber of commerce, you're sort of automatically dialed into that that core group of people that are gonna you're gonna get FaceTime with with state and local policymakers. So that's that's very very valuable. Um, well, let let me you know. So I want to ask you kind of a, maybe one or two more questions, and um, and that kind of was a really good segue to my next question. Was you know that the average? You know, we talked about a business owner and go into potentially joining the chamber of commerce, and you know how that could help. But you know, as far as the average consumer who's out there, and we don't have a lot of live. Our, our very little people are live. We catch most of our views definitely down the road on my channel and his. What can the you know what can the average person do immediately? Because when I got to looking at the at the law that was proposed here in Mississippi, I got to uh, to kind of looking at the uh, the senator who had put the bill up and read the bill. That bill it seemed to be written from complete ignorance of vaping in its entirety. It had it was like. Um, uh, it seemed like it was just a blind throw a dart at, at a topic that maybe it'll make sense. It, li it literally made no sense um, and, and, and had so little to do with vaping. And, and the, the person who wrote it, you could tell, obviously didn't know anything about vaping. So what can the average person do 
to uh, kind of spearhead or educate some of these senators can you know call them email them you know what what do what does CASA recommend and what can people do to uh, to get involved with CASA to uh, you know kind of join the efforts that you guys have going well I think you, it, you you've you've done more than touch on it. it it really is about education and and like I had said you know consumers we can I think more successfully broach some topics um, that that uh, someone who owns a business is going to be um, is going to have some difficulty doing. So consumers can can talk to their lawmakers and and educate them about the products, but probably most importantly is share their experience with them. And for pretty much all of us, um, it's been I was a you know, my story is not unlike everybody else's. I smoked for 21 years. I was a two-pack a day smoker. When I was 18, I smoked three packs a day. Um, I could juggle a greens mower and smoke a cigarette like nobody else, uh, and keep my line straight. Um, you know, and uh, it, 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 I, I, I tried to quit by using the gum, uh, kind of half-heartedly. You know, it was for a girl at the time, and then. Uh, you know, when I moved here, I couldn't smoke indoors, so I would smoke at work and I would chew the gum at night when I was home. Um, and then I decided to try an e-cigarette on a whim and quit within 48 hours. There you go. Uh, and so, you know, putting a human face to the quit story is absolutely very important. And, you know, it's, it, again, I, it just, it, I, I experienced this first in California, listening to an assemblywoman say, you know, hearing going around the table and listening to all these vape shop owners and, and me, the consumer, say, I smoked a lot of cigarettes every day and found vapor products and quit, or, you know, other people have tried all the quit methods and nothing worked until they got to vaping. That, to go through that, and then you kind of come back to the assemblywoman, she's just, you know, that's, that's not what they told me. That's not what they told me these products were capable of. Right. That's not what make these products are doing and you can fill in the blank as to who they are oh sure uh, but you know the other side they are spending tens of thousands of dollars every week educating lawmakers uh with this horrible information uh, and that's that's all they know so as consumers it's absolutely valuable that that you take the time and uh, develop a relationship with your lawmaker. They love to hear from you, by the way. I mean, even though we get a lot of canned responses, um, you know, that's, you, you gotta keep in mind how many people are up to them every day. So um, <laughs> uh, it, it, is, it, is, it is important to reach out and let them know that, you know, you're a success story and, and these products are important to you. And at, at the very least, you're offering your contact information to them and say, hey, Anytime this vaping issue comes across your desk, feel free to reach out to me and, and we'll talk about it. Or I can at least point you in the right direction so you have the correct information. Absolutely. Uh, now, as far as CASA, I, as an organization, maybe tell folks just a little bit about that and how people can get involved. And then we'll, uh, we'll let you go because I know you're a pretty busy fella. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've been falling behind. I, I had to travel all day yesterday, so I'm a bit behind. <coughs> But, uh, uh, yeah, so, I mean, the easiest thing to do is to go to our website and join uh, and make sure that you click the box to get email alerts from us um, because that way we can send you things, everything from a local alert to state and federal issues. And then we put out kind of a quarterly newsletter, which has a lot more content than, than you'll see. In a call to action, calls to, right. calls to action are pretty stripped down. This this is a bill. This is what it does. Here's you know, click and send an email. Um, yeah, that's that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Um, something else to do uh, is we are we have a testimonials project, um, and uh, so much like you know whatever short story you would tell a lawmaker or your friends, uh, type it out and you can go to our, our testimonial site. That's actually one of the like. On our website, if you go to casa.org, you'll see you know five things you can do right now to to, to save vaping. Um, right. That's sorry, it's a little hyperbolic, but um, to protect your access to vapor products. Um, 
and, and the testimonials project is very valuable. We have over 8,000 testimonials right now, and we're trying to get this to a point where we have a significant number of testimonials from each state so that when a state issue pops up, we can kind of support the, the state advocacy organizations and say, you know, you know, if you want to take, you know, several hundred testimonials from our, our site with you or, or someone like me will be able to travel to a state like California and, and, you know, and if the situation is right, present that to a legislature and say, I've got, you know, hundreds or thousands of people in your state who uh, have, have taken the time to write their stories. These are, these are real people, real success stories, um, and, and you should pay attention to them. Um, Absolutely. So we've got join CASA, sign up for emails, write your testimonial out, and, and submit it to our testimonials project, and then uh, supporting HR 2058. Um, and for those that don't know, I, I, I'm assuming you guys are familiar with, yes. with 58. Um, so those that don't know, this is still a very real issue, and um, I, I, I think I, I think it's kind of gotten around that the FDA deeming regulations are, are delayed once again. Um, I don't have official confirmation on this, but if they are finalized this year, it's going to be closer towards November. Right. Um, and yeah, because so I know we were at May twenty first. And now right. it's pushed back, yeah. Yeah, and I, I believe that the uh, FDA's sort of financial impact assessment, whatever, um, was the OMB did not like what they had written. So uh, they, I believe, have been asked to uh, reassess the financial impact. So um, a delay is great, but it's not, it's not the end of this. And uh, HR 2058 or a bill like HR 2058 uh, is absolutely necessary, and so uh, we really do need to be getting more and more co-sponsors onto this bill so that we can feel comfortable uh, getting it into a committee here. Um, and what this does for people who don't know, um, HR 2058 would change the predicate date that's in the Family Smoking Prevention, or sorry, it's the Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act, um, which was amended by the uh, Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act, which gave FDA the authority to regulate e or regulate tobacco products, um, and that current grandfather date is February fifteenth, two thousand seven. HR twenty fifty eight would move the predicate date to whenever the deeming regulations are finalized. So everything that's on the market, you'll still have to register your product products with the FDA, which there will be a cost associated with that. I don't want to make this sound like all unicorns and rainbows. Um, you know, there will still be things that people have to do, and it will be a, too much of a burden for some people, um, which is why we're not selling this as an ideal kind of solution. But um, it will at least allow us to live to fight another day, and uh, that's uh, that's that's definitely worth fighting for. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Alex, we really appreciate you taking the time, man. This is this yeah. has been amazing. Um, a lot of good information. A lot of people down the road will see this. So uh, again, man, we really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to come out and do this with us. And uh, lots of great information and stuff for us to spread around here to the area because people just don't know. And and getting the word out, like you say, is is exactly what it's all about. So, man, we appreciate having you. And maybe we'll check in again down the road a bit. Absolutely, it was my pleasure. Thanks, thanks for taking the time to have me on. Absolutely, oh, so buddy. Much, brother. Man, you yeah. have a great night, buddy. Likewise. Thank you, man. Thanks. Wow. A lot man, of information, man. Man, that was amazing. Kind of actually changed my perception of a few things. What about you? I learned quite a, quite a bit from that. Um, you know, I know Casa is a hell of a hell of an organization. They've been around for. For, I, I think they were the first big advocacy group, and, and I remember trying to push them and support them real big years and years ago. Um, and I'm so glad to see Mississippi finna pick up a group and start to, uh, you know, kind of have our own um, grassroots movement around here. And, and that's exciting to see, and, yeah. and I hope that thing yeah. kicks up and, and we can have the kind of impact that an organization like Asa has had. Yeah, I'd like to touch on the other thing. I mean, we kind of kind of touched on a little bit there, but I think he went into a little bit more detail, but um, you know, the easiest thing you can do as a consumer, if you're watching this, is just pick up the phone, call your congressman, call your senator. Um, 
Your this local is, congressman? Yeah, it's not hard to do. Your That's local right. congressman or woman, um, you can get a hold of them pretty easy. Um, Very you know, call easy. them up and, and, and tell them your success story. You know, don't don't labor them for 30 minutes, but yeah. call up, know what you're going to say, and, and talk to them about things. You know, if there's bills coming out in your state, uh, talk to them about that. Get their take on it and find out where they're at and maybe try to strike up a conversation with them. Like I say, know what you're going to say, call them, make it to the point, and realize that they got other things to do during the day. But, um, you know, that's one of the biggest things to me is just making your voice known sure. as a voter. I was, I'm going to tell you what, I was embarrassed when we was up at Amazing Vapors, the amount of people who, one, didn't know, or two, didn't care. Because there were still quite a few people there who were who was you know just kind of off bullshit. I, I the think they probably don't care. realize the the, well, the gravity of the yeah, situation. You know absolutely. what I mean? It's kind of when you see this in Indiana, you think this won't happen in Mississippi, but that's but just not true. There yeah, was a point absolutely. where Indiana looked at North Dakota and said that'll never happen here. You that's know? right. Or you know how many people are looking at Alaska and saying that's not going to happen here? A hundred percent sales tax. Yep. So, wow. Man, this has been a uh, an information filled show. You know, you, you it, said you th- thought we thought we might go short, but we're doing pretty well here. Um, I say Alex was he had a lot of man, good information. I say really opened my eyes a couple of things too because I have been under the impression up to this point that uh, that business owners probably had a, a weaker voice when you go say, you know, we don't want these laws passed or, or whatever the case is pro vaping because. We got money riding on it, you know yep. what I mean? So, yep. um, <coughs> you know, I guess you kind of look at it either way. I guess it would depend on which representative or senator you're talking to. But um, we're fortunate. We actually, somebody shop, who shops in this store, is, his dad is actually our local representative yep. down in Jackson. So, you know, we it's easy to get a voice over to there. But you guys would be surprised how easy. I, You know, just for, for any odd reason, I had an issue with my power company wanting solar panels, and I got my senator on the phone. You know, you can get them on the phone if you just reach out. So even if, you know, even if there's not some, you know, deeming damning thing about to happen in your state right now, there's no reason to not give them a call yeah, and just have a chat point. with them. Yeah, don't let them get to that point. point. Yeah. You know, you educate them before the other side passes them the information. Not before. I can guarantee you the other side well, is already, already, trying already to working on it, right. Them, so so uh, beat them to the punch. If you're in a state like, you know, like Mississippi where we, we luckily are – are not in danger yet. Um, we can get the right information out. We can get the the stories out now and success stories. Exactly, because so it's, it's easy to get in danger really quick. Really fast, yep. really fast. Yep. Like yep. Indiana, well, Indiana's an example. Nope, they didn't see that coming, and it came out of nowhere, and then bam. Yeah, because I definitely, I don't, I don't think that story was, if it was publicized in Indiana, it definitely wasn't publicized anywhere else, because, I mean, that came up, what, maybe maybe a month before that? I would say, Actually, less, than, I would say less than a month. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, they just kind of came up really, really quick. Um, it could happen anywhere. Absolutely. Man, I think that, you know, I was going to talk about these drippers or, and these tanks. I think I'll save that for next week. You don't think I will, too, brother. Let's, I'll tell you what, this I'm, I'm happy to end it right I here and just let this run on our YouTube channel. Yep. Hopefully, you know, if y'all got people that are spread uh, out there that are vapors, you know, yeah, spread it out. Spread let let people hear it. Um, Alex had a lot of good stuff in there. Like I say, a lot of things that really kind of changed my perception on some yep. things. I'm just, um, just really good, solid information. Yep. And you know, um, as far as organizations go, it doesn't have to be CASA. If you want oh, to get on Safada, vaping militia, whatever it is. Yep. And, and I'm not necessarily saying everybody's got to go out there and join an organization. It, it's helpful just that you support involved. these organizations. Just get involved one way or another. You know, even if it's just calling your center yep. and send an email. Um, yeah, send an email. Send an Talk email. Talk to somebody. Educate the people around you. You know, every day you can all do little things and plant seeds and make our lives better easier more healthy absolutely well guys as always and and debbie one one you know big shout out to debbie for helping us get alex involved in this tonight yeah this couldn't have happened without you so we are eternally grateful and uh we'll revisit advocacy again uh maybe in a few weeks next yeah, week no doubt, though no we'll doubt. do some dumb shit yeah we're gonna do some dumb shit next might week. as well thanks guys and as always okay. well, hang on, i gotta get them both Hey, peace, peace out, out, nomads. Hey, really yeah. good show. Yeah. Really informative, dude.